First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers, Gevork on Copolicy Institute of Cancer Crisis for the kind invitation to this high level critical meeting. In addition to my past roles as president at UICC and ECL, and involvement on onco policies and cancer control actions, I also witnessed the lead attacks to Turkey during the last decade, and also the recent earthquake in the 6th of February, and economic turndown all around the world. So crises and conflicts around the world made me think more about the cancer control in crisis situations. In the next 15, 20 minutes, I would like to, I would, I would like to, my, uh, to reflect my observation on this subject. Let me change the slide. Yeah. When we talk about the crisis, uh, what type of crisis we, ca we, may, uh, we can link with the cancer control? These are the armed or political conflicts, pandemia, natural disasters, earthquake, plus climate emergencies, major accidents, and major economic up and downs, and many others. What makes special for this crisis regarding the cancer control? The, the, the nature of the crisis uh, are listed here. Most of them are unexpected, fast, massive, almost all are beyond control, human-made or natural, unprepared individuals, families, groups, countries, all stakeholders. It really damages the people's life in different ways. And most of the time, the damage is unrepairable. Many causes forced migration, either on conflict or natural, uh, natural disasters. And the data uh, are very limited in many of this crisis, which means it is difficult to plan, manage, and sustain what you provide during these crises. I'd like to reflect uh, two examples from my point of view. One example is from Turkey. The other one is I briefly mentioned the UICC uh, actions on uh, Ukrainian uh, crisis. The first one is the Syrian crisis. And the, according to UNHCR data, Turkey hosts the largest number of refugees, which with 3.6 million people. And 3.2 million of them are Syrians under temporary protection. The Syrian influx started in 2011. In the first few years, it wasn't that massive. So we were not able to understand what, what's happening. But within a few years, the number of the refugees boomed up and it increased to uh, more than 2 million in four years. When you look at the slides, 2015, we had 2.5 million Syrian refugees. When it comes to 2018, it made a peak around uh, 3.6 million. We also have some refugees from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran. So we, I and my team in Turkey, we had two major works uh, with a focus on the cancer in Syrian refugees. The first published in uh, JAMA this year was about the a Syrian Syrians living in southern Turkey. Why we choose southern Turkey? Because more than 50% of the Syrian refugees were living in Turkey, especially in the first five, six years of the crisis. I was able to collect the data from eight university hospitals uh, from the southern Turkey. The, the cancer patients diagnosed between 2011 to 2020. The major aim was to see the treatment outcomes, what major differences we had uh, in, in Syrian refugees with cancer comparing with the Turkish uh, cancer patients. When the influx started in 2011, Turkey began to provide care mainly within the camps. Of course, started with the providing the accommodation, food, vaccination, 
emergency care and others. But they went with the crisis extended in uh, four year, five year, then now it is almost uh, 13, 13 years. Turkey was able to integrate the re refugee healthcare management into its national health system in 2015. I would say Syrians can be benefited uh, from all levels of health service from primary to tertiary care uh, in migration centers, state hospitals, and university hospitals. When it becomes too big, uh, Turkey established local uh, migrant centers to provide care, primary care and secondary care in the migrant centers. But the patients with cancer were always referred to major uh, state hospitals or university hospitals. So in this work we did, I, I mentioned, we, I was able to we collect the data of 1,500 Syrian uh, cancer patients diagnosed and treated in the southern Turkey. I would not mention, I would not uh, present all the results of this work you can find in, in, in you can find it in, in JAMA Network Open in, in May issue. But, but, but my, our main concern was the survival rate. The survival rate was quite low compared with the Turkish citizens. The survival rate for the survival rate for the adults hearing cancer patients was about 17%. For the children, five-year survival rate uh, was about 30%. In the, in the high-income countries, the survival rate for the children was uh, is more than 80, 80%. In Turkey, our national average is 70%. The children with cancer uh, living in Turkey, Syrian, Syrian, Syrian children with cancer living in Turkey, the survival rate is 30%. For the adults, adults uh, survival rate, long-term survival rate for the adult cancer patient, Turkish citizens, the survival rate is around 50 to 60%. But the survival rate for Syrian cancer patient was 17%. This, I think this was unacceptable. Why is, why we have a so different survival rate? In this slide, uh, you see the treatment abandonment, we have a, significant number of treatment abandonment in the Syrian cancer adult uh, patients, Syrian adult cancer patients. The most of them comes with the advanced disease, almost 40%. The data are very similar for children as well. Children also have a, a high number of the, uh, patients with the advanced disease and the significant number of the treatment abandonment. I think this was the first we thought that this was the main reason of the treatment differences, but we have to look for the what is the real reason behind it. Uh, before discussing the real reason behind it, I would like to mention also the other work we have done before this work. We also analyzed the data for the Syrian cancer patients uh, in the city of Konya. It's, it's, it's in the middle of Turkey. Uh, away from the southern Turkey, uh, almost 260 patients. The survival rates treated in the city of Konya is relatively higher than the than the ones treated in the southern Turkey, but also they had high uh, rate of the advanced disease, and also again uh, there was a high treatment abandonment. The survival rate was about 37 percent why the survival rate in the Konya and the Southern Turkey is different. There could be many reasons. Maybe Konya has a compact health system, relatively smaller area. Maybe it is because of that. Maybe small number of the patients, we don't know. But what we know is survival rate both for adult and children in, from those two studies are quite low than the rest of the world. This was the, the main findings from our study. When we look, look around the world, the low income countries share only the 0.5% of the global gross domestic product, yet host 22% of the people 
displaced across the borders. By contrast, high-income countries, which account for nearly two-thirds of the global wealth, hosted only 17% of the people displaced across borders at the end of the 2021. So it, we have a worldwide disparity. When we uh, look at uh, look at the 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 root reasons uh, why the survival rate are so different in this population, we uh, we uh, we look very carefully to the migration process. Migration management is really a very complex issue. Limited studies, high number and extended duration of migration damage is unrepairable and the permanent damage is, uh, is there. So it is not only what you provide uh, in your uh, country, you, as a host country, you cannot change the result because the migration starts when people, the problem starts when people leave their home. When people, they leave their home uh, during, before, just before the migration starts, the healthcare is disrupted attacks on healthcare facilities, threats to medical staffs, lack on and looting of supplies, lack of human uh, resources, lack of security, collapse of the economy. These starts the, 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 uh, before the migration. So even uh, they were able to get uh, proper care after the, they have reached to host country, the, even uh, the, the situation, what they have exposed during the pre-migration period is a critical factor determines the end result of the, the, the survival numbers of those patients. During the migration, physical, mental stress, violence, abuse, dangerous travel, loss of network, lack of records, high infection rates, but also in the post-migration period, migrant perspective, host country perspective, there are many reasons like delay on diagnosis during the immigration, missing med medical records, health literacy. For example, in Turkey, we don't, we, the most, we, we, the language is a barrier for, for Turkish and Syrian uh, people. Uh, discrimination, refugee quota. Some refugees are afraid to be registered. If the, if the refugees are not registered, they are not able to get uh, the, the proper health uh, services. Unfamiliar, unfamiliarity with the new health system. These are the uh, barriers uh, during the post-migration period uh, in the context of the migrant perspective. But in the host country perspective, suddenly you have a, you have a, a big uh, number of uh, people and you are not ready to provide care. You do, if you don't have a crisis plan, additional burden your uh, existing or current healthcare system, insufficient health workers, missing medical records, language, cultural barriers, finance problems, a tension between the migrants and the host country population. These are the main barriers. I think we all uh, should know well the barriers to overcome the problems, to help the people, uh, to decrease the burden of this issue and how can we uh, do better on, on control cancer? The second example, this is the exam, my experience from the Syrian issue, uh, crisis in Turkey, cancer patients be, being diagnosed and treated in Turkey. Uh, I, I, I also served in the uh, advisory board of the uh, UICC, uh, UICC established uh, fund for helping the uh, cancer organizations within Ukraine and the, in, in the organizations uh, in the uh, neighboring countries in Ukraine, UICC established uh, an emergency solidarity fund in 2022 to assist cancer organizations to support patients affected by the conflict in Ukraine. The fund served as a vehicle to signal the un unity and spirit of the cancer community supporting projects addressing the impact of the crisis on cancer patients and their families from Ukraine. The, the area of focus were help to cover operational cost of cancer organizations based in Ukraine to support uh, their function, 
fund acquisition of urgently required medicines and equipments for Ukrainian cancer patients, contribute to transportation of the Ukrainian cancer patients and their families to uh, surrounding regions, and support the health workers in Ukraine and the surrounding uh, countries to provide uh, cancer care. The UICC was able to collect uh, over uh, 1 million US dollars from 15 European, European and international care organizations. This is most of them are the uh, Euro European organizations. Then uh, we have received 78 grant applications in, uh, uh, around one year from 27 organizations. Uh, 48 grants were awarded to 22 organizations in different regions of the Ukraine, but also we also funded some of the organizations outside the Ukraine uh, working on the Ukrainian uh, cancer patients. I would give several examples. For example, this uh, project fund this project funded to support Ukrainian oncology patients arriving in Poland. I will not read them all how many patients are benefited, but there were significant contribution to people arriving in, in Holland, uh, Poland through these organizations. This was another example, uh, acquisition of an ultrasound machine and colposcope and other equipment for a mobile medical platform. Over 800 women have been examined uh, through this organization's activities, UICC was able to contribute their activity uh, in, in, in Kvitna. And the, the other example is the Grigoriev Institute. Uh, they were as, uh, to assist to cancer patients in Kharkiv region of Ukraine during the war. Uh, information about their disease uh, to decrease their mental burden recommendation for the nutrition of cancer patients. Another example is providing an ultrasound and, and the supporting international inter interventional uh, approaches to diagnose and, and treatment of uh, cancer. Uh, so at the end, UIC has recently awarded the final grants and uh, completed the, the uh, project and closed. And UICC and on behalf of the Ukrainian cancer community, we they uh, we thank to all donors over one million dollar. I mean, when you look at the global burden, you may think one million is nothing, but we know what how 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 it works. In Turkey, for example, in Turkey, of course, Turkey is getting uh, financial aid from the European Union and other organizations, but also Turkey is putting a lot of money from uh, their own pocket whoever are, uh, are putting uh, not only the money, but the support will be uh, helping on the uh, situation because as I, as I said, uh, crisis is, is unmanageable. So there is a need for urgent actions in cancer control in crisis situations. Crises are all over the world, everywhere, every, every location. So if we, if I if I take you to the cancer control, you know or you all know the what is the cancer control, but a national cancer control plan is a sustainable strategic plan to control cancer based on the country's cancer burden, risk factor prevalence, and resources available to implement the plan in the context of the social economic environment and the healthcare system in that country. So you you sit the uh, Together with all stakeholders, government, all stakeholders, uh, put efforts, money, plan, implement, monitor. But that is a nation uh, construct content. What happens if if if, if you have uh, in a few years if you have two million, two million, three, three million refugees? What happens if you have an unexpected uh, crisis like the flood in Libya or nuclear accident in somewhere else? So. Uh, we have to think about, we have to look closely to the uh, elements of the cancer control program, then how can we modify the cancer control programs or how what should we, we should add to cancer control program to better manage the cancer control in crisis situations. We The elements of the cancer control programs are 
why we need a national cancer control plan, what interventions are required, how the interventions will be implemented, how the process of implementation will be monitored and evaluated, who will be invo involved, and what, what when the activities will be under, undertaken, what is the capability and resource availability, that which means operational plan, and what is your business plan? Uh, how, how, how do you uh, fund your national concert content? And what is the plan for monitorization and evaluation of the cancer control plan? In a high level implementation, we have to think about the priority from the high level to, to uh, all uh, horizontal and vertical level, the commitment, the use of the data and the commitment to support registration surveyors, a clear vision for cancer control, uh, an achievable implementation, and the a secure funding commitment for a finance financial uh, uh, implementation of the national concern plan. I mean, many countries uh, have a national cancer control plan, but if they have a financial part of it, the national cancer control plan will not be uh, su uh, successful. The participants also from the all stakeholders, mutual respect, willingness to achieve commonly defined goals through collaboration by all stakeholders are important elements of the cancer control. This is one of the best article uh, I read about the cancer control published in 2018 by UICC. When you look at the, the I will not give all details, but 158 countries had a national cancer control plan in 2018, but not, uh, but most of them are not uh, comprehensive cancer control plans. Different elements of the cancer control plan, HPV, cervical screening, other screening, radiotherapy, palliative, and others. But when we look at here, there is a there is a there is an item also vulnerable population included in the national cancer control plan. In total of 158 uh, worldwide national cancer control plans, only 53 of the 152 national cancer control plan mentions about the vulnerable population. I have not go through the, all the details of these 53 plan, but I know uh, many of them uh, during my, during all my years contact communicating with those colleagues. These are mostly with the uh, older people, uh, young people, LGBT community, ethnic differences. None of them mentions about the forcibly displaced people and the and the crisis. Uh, cancer control uh, crisis affected people uh, when they mentioned about the control pop uh, uh, vulnerable population in the current cancer control plan. So how to include the cancer uh, control in crisis situation to national control uh, national cancer control plan? We have to we have to create a political priority at at the high level management level building the crisis management capacity, financing, how to better use the existing infrastructure, and how can we mobilize new facilities or infrastructures uh, to provide better care for uh, people affected by the crisis? What evacuation strategies we can, we can uh, use does it really work? Does it really help? How can we uh, use the human resource management? Because this was an issue in my experience in Turkey. Of course, Turkey is a big country. We were able to mobilize. We were able, we were able to use our current human resource capacity. But then in some places, we, we saw that uh, the, the hospitals and the places were full of refugees. So the, the, the reaction started from the public. Then Turkey is, is started to establish migrant centers and even used uh, the Syrian doctors in the migrant centers because to overcome the language problem, culture barriers. 
So if we included the healthcare professional uh, in the, in, uh, for the care of the crisis affected people, this is just an example, but human resource management is really, really a critical part of the uh, uh, cancer control in crisis situation. How, how, how are we going to access the crisis affected population? When, when I look at the, uh, the situation in Gaza, uh, I heard the news, Sanjut was able to transport uh, around 15 children with cancer to Egypt. Turkey was able to transport 26 cancer patients uh, to An city of Ankara, my place. So when I when I when I read these news, I felt happy. But the, on the other side, I was disappointed because we were to be, we feel happy if we see just ten patients, twenty patients as, as are transported. This is good. But what happens to to, to the to the patients who who are who are still there? So the on-site interventions uh, are critical for protecting people, but off-site interventions also uh, important. So establishment and allocation of the new crisis dedicated facilities are a critical part of the uh, elements uh, then we the, 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 to, to create a system for uh, managing the uh, cancer care during crisis. So I just would like to uh, put down my inspirations, what solution and suggestions we can bring together, training the healthcare professionals when the, the people migrate to other places to overcome the barriers, cultural barriers, not only the cancer, but also other non-communicable diseases that, as mentioned earlier, ethnic differences, bridging the gap in the treatment outcomes between migrant and host populations, because the world world has experience, enough experience on the on the on the health care outcomes of the voluntary migration. But when we look at it, it's very limited uh, real uh, data uh, from the forcibly displaced people. So targeting the communication, public awareness, patient education, lifestyle treatment recommendation to close the gap between migrants and the host population. Integration cancer care into the existing health system. In Turkey, in some in some ways, we became successful to, to integrate the cancer care of the Syrian refugees, the Turkish health system. But you see the result by my uh, my group two works. Still, the survival rate is is low. So this is it, it is if, if if integration only will not help. So this is a comprehensive holistic approach. What we need. So we have to increase the national capacities to provide cancer care to both nationals and refugees, UN, other agencies, host countries, to develop guidelines to manage refugees with cancer, need for more funds and resources for from international organizations and other humanitarian agencies. My final comments are all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Uh, this is from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 1. Do not overlook the reasons for migration when you work and invest and work and invest on the health effects of the forced migration. More research is needed on asylum seekers and refugees. Health is holistic and connected to other factors such as education, gender, socioeconomic status should not be forgotten. Develop sustainable and cultural sensitive policies based on the fundamental human rights principles to overcome the problem of uncertainty, sustainability of the policy is very important. I mean, in opening speech, Princess Dina mentioned a few times about the Geneva Convention 1951, it is that old. But does it help the real situation today? <laughs> not, not much, not much help. So, if I, I I have two suggestions for the global. Uh, I may I made two suggestions for the global oncology community, uh, on my panel speech in Long Beach World Cancer Day Summit. So my first uh, proposal was, every nation cancer control plan must have a section as cancer control in crisis situation, and my second proposal, my second recommendation, 
to all stakeholders, collecting data and research during crisis uh, situation is not a luxury, is not a, is not a fancy thing uh, we do. It is a must to do for actions against crisis. We did every, every single data collected from the uh, locations where crises is, uh, are happening. We need, we need data to better manage and better control of the crisis. These, these are, these are uh, my inspiration. I thank you again, Georg and, 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 and the, uh, the managers of the Institute of Cancer and Crisis. Thank you for listening.